A new study finds that cold plunges are good for women. Now, I know this flies in the face of contemporary advice. There's a doctor out there, I'm not going to mention her name, but she really tries to tell women that cold plunges are bad for them. It will raise your cortisol. You should never get cold. Women are not just small men. Okay, these are the, the exact words that she uses in her book and on her videos and so forth. And uh, her content has unfortunately caused a lot of women to be skeptical about even trying cold plunges to see if they would be helpful for their mental wellness or their stress reduction or their joint pain and so forth. But this analysis by researchers in London found, particularly postmenopausal and perimenopausal women report a big reason why they do cold plunges and they do open water swimming all year round that's cold in the winter, uh, in the spring, in the summer and so forth is because it improves their mental health and symptoms related to menopause. And I think that's, it's just important to talk about. Now, I'm not here to say, although I am biased, I believe that cold plunges are amazing. They've improved my life. I've been doing them for more than 10 years. I've gone through several different iterations of my cold water immersion therapy, starting out with a galvanized stock tank in the backyard, getting the ice barrel, and now upgrading to the Moroska Forge icebreaker. I love this stuff, but I started out just cold water swimming. That's how I got into it. And it's amazing how you feel afterwards. And so they surveyed these women and they wanted to see, hey, why do you participate on your own volition? No one's holding a gun to your head saying, jump in the, this river, lake, or ocean. These women are just doing it. Why are you doing this? What is the reason? And what do you, most importantly, in my opinion, what do you experience from a health perspective after you do this? And so these investigators surveyed 1,114 different women, and this was published this year, 2024, January, I believe, in the journal Post Reproductive Health. 785 of these women were actually going through menopause, and they wanted to examine the effects of cold water swimming on their health and well being. The findings show that menopausal women experience a significant improvement in anxiety. As reported by 46.9% of the women, mood swings, 34.5%, and low mood, 31% of the women, and hot flashes, about 30% of the women reported that as a result of cold water swimming. Now, let's just pause here. This study found that roughly a third of the women that are going through menopause experience significant benefits with their mood, with uh, hot flashes, with mood swings, and anxiety, about 46% of these women report the reason why they go swimming in the ocean or cold lakes is because it makes them feel better. So this is not to say that cold immersions or open water, cold water swimming should be uh, prescriptive and would benefit everyone, but it turns out that in a small minority of women, this is the main reason why they do this. And I think this is important. And they go on to say that a majority of women, 63.3% swam specifically to relieve their menopausal symptoms. This is pretty significant. I mean, imagine if six in 10 women said black cohosh or fill in the blank with a supplement, ashwagandha relieves my symptoms. If you just randomly surveyed 1100 women, wouldn't you want to like kind of dive into that and explore that a little bit further? And that's exactly what these investigators were doing here because they wanted to figure out, well, it kind of doesn't really make sense. And this is what this doctor who uh, is sort of anti-cold immersions for women says is it's really stressful. It's It raises cortisol and anything that raises cortisol must be bad. Well, it turns out that eating raises cortisol. It turns out getting out of bed in the morning raises cortisol. It turns out that exercise also raises cortisol. So if we always want to relegate cortisol as something negative, well, then why would we ever get out of bed? Why would we ever eat? Why would we ever exercise? Because all of those things we do all the time and they too raise cortisol. It turns out that there is a transient, acute release of cortisol. Cortisol is not always bad. It turns out that cortisol has some health promoting benefits. That's why when you exercise or you get excited and you go to the gym or you go for a run, cortisol increases. It helps you during those uh, moments. What we want to stay away from and differentiate more broadly from is chronic elevations in cortisol. So if you did a cold plunge all day, every day, and you were chronically cold, that would be problematic. We're talking about a short-term acute stress, and it turns out that during the winter months, women would actually self-regulate their cold water swimming. They, would, uh, they reported in the summer months, as we'll talk about, they would go for 30 minutes or 40 minutes, but during the winter, it would be closer to five or 15 minutes. So uh, humans are really good at adapting to their environments and doing things so long as they feel good. And so I think it's important. Uh, they quoted one woman here, and there's a lot of quotes that we're going to dive into shortly, specifically around menopause. From these 1,114 study subjects, a 57-year-old woman stated, cold water is phenomenal. It has saved my life. In the water, I can do anything. All symptoms, physical and mental, disappear, and I feel like me at my best. 
So again, these are just anecdotal reports of people, but I think we should pay attention to this because, you know, when someone makes this sweeping claim that cold is bad for women, a lot of people think, oh, I, I shouldn't do that. And then they're scared of doing something that might benefit them. And the reason why I'm making this video is we had a thermal party at my friend Josh Free's house. Uh, he has a great um, sauna and cold water uh, location here in Woodinville, Washington. I can share with you some B-roll uh, footage of that. And I was in the sauna with someone who I've never met before. And she bought a, a cold water immersion tank in her and has it in her backyard. But she likes the wood-fired sauna uh, and the heat from that. Uh, she got into cold water immersions because yoga wasn't enough to help her joint pain. She has osteoarthritis and she notices significant benefits when she does her first morning cold plunge. And so imagine if she was still struggling with arthritis and happened to hear from the so-called expert that said, you should never get cold if you're a woman because it's really, really bad for you, then maybe she wouldn't have considered that and wouldn't be experiencing the joint relief that she had uh, been benefiting from. So I think uh, it's important that we just look at these different modalities and try them and see if they work for you. And if they make you feel better, cool. If they don't, then don't do it. That's really what we should do. But since we're talking about cold, I do also want to remind you that getting hot on purpose is really good. And that's why I'm a huge fan of the at-home sauna blanket by our friends over at bondcharge.com. What makes the sauna blanket unique is its small form factor. It gets really hot and it's low in non-native EMF. You know that EMF can be problematic for your hormones, for your health. This is one of the lowest EMF sauna blankets on the market but check this out. It gets up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really, really hot. That's honestly hotter than most of the at-home infrared saunas. And so this is a great way to get into contrast therapy, thermal therapy. There's a lot of benefits to getting hot on purpose. It mimics exercise. It helps you sweat and sweat is good, but it also helps sweat out persistent organic pollutants and heavy metals. There is a really great study called the Blood Urine Sweat Study by Stephen Guinness in Alberta, Canada that found that when you sweat, either whether it's exercise or going in the sauna or using the Bond Charge at Home Sauna Blanket, you release heavy metals like lead, cadmium, arsenic, and mercury that comes out in your sweat. So this is a great tool to optimize your lifestyle, help to detoxify, and I like to go in the sauna or use a sauna blanket from Bond Charge before I go to bed in the evening time. So you can go to bondcharge.com for slash HIH to save on this amazing at home sauna blanket. Again, it's one of the hottest yet lowest EMF sauna blankets on the market. I'll put links in the description below. So let's get back to the study. I think this is really important to dive into some specifics of what these investigators found. They said the majority of women, about 76% stated the main reason why they swim was to be outside followed by their mental health. 65% of women find that open water swimming in both the winter and the summer improves their mental health. Now this is important because I think the statistics are quite grim when it comes to the amount of women using pharmacologic prescription drugs that have a litany of side effects, including low libido, uh, suicidality, uh, all, all sorts of gastrointestinal issues and so forth. You know, the, the SSRI category of drugs and, and all these compounds um, have an addictive potential and things like that. 65% of women find that open water swimming in the cold improves their mental health. This is really profound. We should pay attention to this. Of the 729 women who stated one of the main reasons they swim was for mental health, 299 said they have good mental health and 430 did not state they have good mental health. So it turns out that this can be a key factor to help improve your mental health. And it a lot of people, men and women, are suffering from mental health issues. So instead of turning to maladaptive things like self-medicating with drugs and alcohol or even getting on prescription drugs, why shouldn't we consider going in the water, especially doing this with friends? This is a really cool part about um, winter swimming is you can get a buddy, you can get a friend, get your neighbor, um, your housemate, and whatever, and just go for a cold plunge. It feels amazing. And you're doing something vulnerable. You're going to be more emotionally close with that person afterwards. The individuals also stated that exercise, about 60%, and general health, 53%, were the main reasons for them swimming. Nearly one in five women swim mainly to relieve menstrual symptoms. They go on to say that women reported that cold water swimming reduced their menstrual symptoms, notably psychological symptoms such as anxiety mood swings, and irritability. The statistics are about 46% of women reported an improvement in anxiety, 37% reported improvement in mood swings, and 37% reported improvements in irritability. Perimenopausal women reported a significant improvement in anxiety, about 46%. They also talk about mood swings, low mood, and those statistics are roughly 35% of the perimenopausal women noted improvement in mood swings. 
31% reported improvement in low mood, and 30% reported improvement with hot flashes. The investigators write, the majority of women swam to relieve these symptoms, and they felt that swimming were helped by the physical and mental effects of the cold water, which was more pronounced when it was colder. I think that's important to acknowledge, that women are noting that cold water makes them feel better than even in the summer, despite the fact that during the cold months, they reported they reduced the amount of time that they're in the water, going from about 30 to 40 minutes to just five to 15 minutes. And so you can see figure three, this really highlights why women choose to open water swim in both the winter and the summer. About 66% of women report because it supports their mental health. Uh, about 60% say for exercise, about 55% say general health, about 40 percent or so, 38% report for companionship. But vast majority of women say the reason why they open water swim in both the winter and the summer is to just be outside. So I think this is really important to check out. Now, this figure five is even more interesting because we know the ocean is generally cooler than uh, some other water reservoirs. And majority of women, uh, and these are women of Europe, by the way, like to swim in the ocean, in the sea, where it's significantly cooler, the water's darker, it's a little bit more scary, but it's also more invigorating. So I think that's interesting. They also talk about how majority of women tend to swim uh, a few times a week. It was only less than 10% swim every day, but about 60% of women say they swim a few times a week during the summer and about 40% of the time they swim a few times a week during the winter and 30% swim at least once per week during the winter. And so that's figure seven here. So I think that's quite interesting. So women were asked how long these swim sessions would last. In the summer, the most common length of time for swimming was between 30 and 60 minutes. In the winter, the majority of swims were stated to last between just five and 15 minutes. So it turns out that humans, as I mentioned before, are really good at self-regulating. And so if the water was extremely deleterious or they got really, really cold, they would just swim for a shorter period of time. And so I think that's important, you know, to uh, consider when we're, you're thinking about doing cold water immersions or doing an ice bath in your backyard, just because some guru on the internet says they do three minutes a day, just do what feels good. And some days might be a little bit longer than others. Uh, just listen to your body and do what feels good. Now, let's finish off with some quotes. I think this is really interesting. And these are, again, just direct quotes. You know, During this survey, these investigators had an open section of the survey where they allowed people to just report what they felt after getting cold on purpose by doing open water swimming in both the winter and the summer. One woman said, cold water swimming has been so good for my mental health. The elation after a swim is remarkable and priceless. Another one said, certainly puts you in a good mood and sets you up for the day. The main reason for me is it resets my mood if I'm feeling stressed or anxious. I feel cold water swimming helps my emotional health and clears my head. I do physically better when I have gone for a swim. Open water swimming is my happy place. Wild swimming completely resets my physical and mental state to calm. Lifts your mood. You are with nature in the sea. It's relaxing and so much fun. Going with a female friend is just the best. Makes you feel so alive. Another woman writes, if I am unable to swim for more than a week, my mental health deteriorates. The last one here that I'll read is cold water is phenomenal. It has saved my life. In the water, I can do anything. So again, I think it's really disingenuous for some folks here in the US who apparently haven't traveled to Europe and seen what European women do. I mean, I've been to Ireland, I've been to the UK, I've been to Denmark, uh, Sweden, I haven't been to Finland or, Nor or Norway yet, but I do talk to people who either have lived there or have visited all over Scandinavian countries and parts of Europe, people cold water swim on purpose. No one is saying do this because it's a biohacky thing. No one is saying do this for brown fat. They just do it because they feel better. We should be paying attention to that. We should not be discouraging that. And so I implore you to at least consider it to see if it might benefit your mental health, particularly if you struggle with peri or postmenopausal hormone changes or changes in your mood or affect, your irritability, mood swings, anxiety. I know for me, if I'm having a terrible day, and this is, I admit bias, it's anecdotal, it's N of one. If I'm having a bad day, the first thing I do is go on a cold plunge. It just resets your mental state and you start to feel a sense of elation. Is that the dopamine? Is it the epinephrine, the norepinephrine? Is it, who knows what it is mechanistically? All I know is that I feel better and that's why I do it. So I, I talk about these things because we have pretty good research to support not only the physiologic effects, but the mental health effects. And I think that's something to consider. I also note, and as do many other people, my joints just feel better after doing a cold plunge. And as you get older, you know that you can be limited, you know, by your 
by your functionality of your joints, you know, low back issues, hip issues, knee issues. I mean, these, these are real concerns for a lot of people. So I would just give cold plunging a try, especially open water swimming during the winter. It's a lot of fun to do with friends. And as you just heard from many other females, 1114 individuals find majority of them find it helps their mental health. So that's it for today's show, friends. I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. We'll catch you in a future video down the road.